We got ourselves a new turbo, boys. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Gruesome Garage. And we've made a lot of progress on the Cherokee since the last video. We even got some more, you know, shiny parts. But before we start this video, we have to say something to you guys. Thank you so much. We cannot believe that we've already hit 500 subscribers. It's absolutely crazy. You know, when we first started these videos, we didn't think that we'd get that popular. We started doing stuff that's not that popular, you know. Cherokees and IDIs, they're really not that popular in the scheme of things while everyone's doing LS swaps and other things. But we wanted to make videos that we couldn't find on YouTube ourselves. And it's just awesome that we started making these videos for you guys and that you actually enjoy them, you know? We, we can't believe it. We can't believe that we have this little following already and you know, you guys are the fuel to our fire to make more videos. We wanna say thank you and uh, we love it. We're gonna to try to keep putting a video out at least once a week, hopefully on Sundays. You know, Jeff and I both work full time and uh, to, to us this is just a hobby and we just, we wanna have fun with it. That's, that's our main goal. That's all we care about, having fun. And uh, when we get to a thousand subscribers, if we get that far, who knows? We would like to do some type of giveaway. We're not sure what we want to give away yet, but uh, probably something Cherokee related or Ford. That's our two uh, main focuses here on the channel. Yeah, our Achilles heel, you know? So, thank you guys very much. Thanks. Back to our main content. Today, it's Christmas in August. One of my favorite days of the year. Happens a lot here. You know, just part of building stuff. You get a lot of, you acquire a lot of boxes. So, let's check out our delivery today. What do we got here, Jeff? Let's start with the least important and go to the most important. So, doesn't matter right now. What matters? That's, is, all, that's all that matters. I know you guys don't care about these parts, but... Uh, we'll throttle it. position sensor. We had a 96 Cherokee throttle position sensor. I wired a pigtail for a 2001 throttle position sensor. So it's a lot easier to get at the parts store, like I said before. And, and just like all the other pigtails, this one and all the other 2001 you see on here was pulled off of that 4.0. You can see hiding in the corner over there. Yeah, ever since we moved it, we disturbed the Cherokee tree and it's not growing as prevalent as before, but... It's still growing. It's still growing. So, boring part number one. Got and acquired. Boring, but very important. important. Boring part number two. As we left off in the last video, we pulled out the crank position sensor, or cam position sensor. This also guy. known as the cam synchronizer. And... We discovered that it's garbage, so guess what we got? Another one. Super simple, super easy, super boring, but... Essential. Now, essential. Now to the good last part. Last but least, we got ourselves a genuine EM USA GT35. And there she is, sitting pretty. If you want the important part number, there it is. So now that we got our delivery out of the way, the next step is to pick up where we left off, which would be getting the cam position sensor in. Now, it's a little tricky. You gotta make sure it's aligned. We have the motor at top dead center right now. If you watched the last video, you saw how you do that. Very simple. Line the mark up on the crank, top dead center. So, as many of you guys know, the top of these uh, sensors come off, or the top of the uh, alignment, and the top piece is actually the sensor. And when you buy a new one of these, they come with a handy dandy tool to help you align it to top dead center. If you look right here, it's got this beautiful tool and it only goes on one way. Let's see if we can get it. If you look, slide right there. There we go. Got ourselves some ultra slick zinc, you know, assembly lube, some ZDDP as people call it. We're just throwing some on here just for shits and gigs. Doesn't really matter, but makes us yeah, warm and fuzzy. Please spill it all over the engine. Thank as you. I spilled none of it. 
One single drop. Oh, another, another right on the pipe, thanks. No, clock it back. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, you gotta twist it a little. Well, well, well. Of course, after fiddling for a, a little while trying to get this in, we finally figured out where we think, at least, is the correct position for it. It's all the positions I can find online. It, the problem is it's not the same as the stock. Stock from the one that we took off. The one we took off has this nice little pin that goes through and that's where you slide it in at top dead center. This one came with this weird cup thing that's in a completely different spot than this. But the rest of the thing and the sensor looks the same. So we think that this is incorrect and that we put it in the correct position based off of where this one sits. So hopefully when we get the mega squirt all hooked up and all the sensors work, you know, if we're having problems starting it, that's the first place we're gonna look. But for now, we think we got it in the right place. All right, so we took the turbo out to give ourselves a little more room. And uh, now we're gonna pull the up pipe here out. I'll show you guys what that looks like. And we gotta pull it out anyways for the new turbo. We have to shorten this section down here. I don't know if you can really see that. Push the turbo towards the firewall more. We have a lot more room now that we took the uh, blower motor and the whole heating system out. We will be putting another heating system on because uh, we live in the great white north and it's pretty cold up here. We also have a lot more room because the distributor is taken out and we're going to coil packs. So why not? You know, we were afraid before that the heat was going to melt the distributor from the turbo and bye bye distributor. All right, guys, here's the mystical pipe. You know comes right out of factory i've shown this before in another video but uh i'll show it again comes right out of there little ditty o2 straight down nice 90 right under the trans straight over 90s back up and uh fires out we pulled out the up pipe and this is half of the up pipe the other half runs under the transmission like i showed you and hooks up to a v-band clamp right out of the header so i my plan is to cut it here take out a section i don't know two and a half inches shorten it and pull the turbo closer to the firewall so let's get the hacking We've got it tacked in place here, and uh, we clocked the turbo how we wanted it. And if you can see, we just gave it a couple tacks to hold her. And now it's time to do my favorite part, welding the old exhaust. Nice little three inch JU from Byron Performance. Best thing to buy if you're trying to make your own exhaust, JU. You got a 45. 290s and a nice long straight section makes making your own pipe work very easy. You need at least one. So my accomplice Jeff popped a little hole jobber right in our inner fender well here. And my plan is to come out of here, 45, fender dump.
Friday, the gruesome garage is like a well-oiled machine. So what we've concluded is, got our hole here, right? You already saw that. We had to extend this a little bit. We cut her too short. Classic, but what are you gonna do? That's a good part about metal. You can cut it, weld it back together, whatever you gotta do with it, it's metal. Sweet. Let's get her uh, tacked in place. Contact. We have the downpipe tacked in place now. Time to weld her all up. Weld up our up pipe, which you can see down there. And a few more things we have to do for the exhaust of this is we need a wideband O2 sensor, which I will place right here. I've been doing some research and from what I can find, the best place for it on a turbo application is as close to the turbo as you can get it. So that's what we're gonna do. Another thing I need to do is pipe the wastegate out. There's the flange for the wastegate. It's off at the moment. So that's going to come straight out this way. And hopefully I'll pop it out right under this. So we'll have two little pipes next to each other. I've been thinking about piping it right into the downpipe itself. But we'll see what happens. Not sure how that's going to go yet. So next week you'll oh. see us wire in coils. And what else? Hopefully we'll get this cam position sensor wired in and we'll get the crank position sensor wired in also those two are a little tricky learn that you need some resistors in there we'll tell you about that and also we're gonna start hopefully wiring up all the power distribution to everything you know the coils the mega squirt switches you know finishing touches to get this Jeep running again so tune in next time guys like subscribe let us know what you guys think and have a great long weekend.